I began to feel that I had been wrong. The main cause of our unhappiness was not loneliness, as I had always believed, but a desire to be somewhere else. The realisation grew in me that the lives of an earlier kind of displaced person, political deportees sent to a designated location, could show me things that accounts of banishment or confinement alone could not. About the word home and the nature of empires and the conflict between leaving and staying that seems to animate the world. It was not a coincidence that the three people who eventually became my subjects lived at a time when European empire building was at its most rapacious, nor that their places of exile were remote islands. A French anarchist named D Louise Michel, a Zulu king named Dina Zulu Kesachuayo, a Ukrainian revolutionary named Lev Sternberg. Each of them sacrificed freedom and home to larger ideas of freedom and home. Michel as a figurehead of the short-lived radical socialist government known as the Paris Commune, Dina Zulu as an enemy of British colonialism in Zululand, and Sternberg as a militant campaigner for the overthrow of Tsarism in Russia. I admired them, especially their ability to keep one eye on the horizon from the islands to which they were banished. New Caledonia in the South Pacific in Michel's case, St Helena in the South Atlantic in Dina Zulu's, and Sakhalin off the far eastern coast of Siberia in Sternberg's. These islands appeared to lie far outside the mainstream of history, but I'd learned that the edge was precisely where the power of the metropole, Paris, London, St Petersburg, Rome, was often most brashly and revealingly expressed. Go to those islands, I thought, and you might begin to understand not only what exile meant for your subjects, but perhaps something about the nature of displacement itself.